Solving general chemistry problems, thermodynamics. We all know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin. You can never get it to freeze at plus one degree Celsius. However, you can get it to not freeze at minus one degree Celsius. When water is cooled below its freezing point and yet has not turned to ice, it is said to be supercooled. The reason this can happen is related to the initiation of the freezing process, and if you cool a bottle of water carefully, you can produce a bottle of supercooled water. A sharp blow to the bottle can induce the freezing process, and in a few seconds the liquid water all freezes. Once initiated, this process occurs spontaneously, but it does not occur reversibly. Here is an example. Notice how the liquid water turns quickly into ice, and the reaction front propagates quickly down from the bottle uh, from the top. Uh, this freezing of the supercooled water occurs spontaneously and irreversibly. Every chemical reaction equation has a forward and a reverse direction. In the forward direction, reactants turn into products, and vice versa in the reverse direction. We can choose to write down the equation in any manner, but once written down, the forward direction is defined based on how we chose to write it down. The word spontaneous is used in chemistry to mean the reaction proceeds in the forward direction as written. It is not meant to imply that it must occur quickly or even slowly, and does not mean that there is no need for something to happen to get it started, like banging the bottle down. It just means that, based on thermodynamics, it will proceed in the forward direction. Non-spontaneous obviously means that it will not go in the forward direction, and that, it all, and that also implies that it will go in the reverse direction. This is all based on our having written down a reaction equation and defined what we will choose to call forward. A reaction that goes forward spontaneously at one temperature may be non-spontaneous in that direction at another. A reaction may go forward spontaneously with one set of concentrations of the reaction participants, and it may be non-spontaneous in that direction with another set. Remember that spontaneous just means goes in the forward direction as written, with no promise regarding its reaction speed or whether you have to do something to get it started. The reaction displayed in the short video is the transformation of liquid water at a supercooled temperature to solid water at the same temperature. Clearly, once initiated, by the sharp blow on the table, the reaction proceeded spontaneously. In thermodynamics, reaction spontaneity is measured by entropy changes, but we have to consider two simultaneous entropy changes. The water that is freezing, changing from the liquid phase to the solid phase, we call it the system, and it experiences a flow of heat and we use the mathematical tools discussed in the other videos to determine the entropy change that arises from that. However, the heat flow must be going to or coming from some other place. That other place is called the surroundings. The sum of the entropy change in the surroundings and the system is called the entropy change of the universe. System plus surroundings equals universe. Now, I realize that universe sounds rather grandiose, but the surroundings that are accessible to the reaction constitute, with the system, the relevant portion of the universe. It is the entropy change in the universe that determines spontaneity. Three situations can arise and need to be considered. First, delta S universe equals zero because delta S system exactly balances and counters delta S surroundings. This only happens when a process occurs reversibly. Or delta S universe is greater than zero, positive. Delta S system and delta S surroundings have values such that their sum produces this condition. Either one can be positive or negative, it is only essential that their sum be positive. Under those conditions, the reaction in the system that is forward as we have defined it for these calculations will occur spontaneously. And delta S universe less than zero, the forward reaction is non-spontaneous. The reverse reaction must, however, be spontaneous. It is from here that we obtain the second law of thermodynamics, which observes that for any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe, not just that of the system or just that of the surroundings, increases. Here are a couple of word problems asking about the entropy change of the universe. In both cases, liquid water freezes to become ice. They both occur spontaneously. The only difference is the temperature at which occurs, 273.15 Kelvin versus 265.15 Kelvin. In the first case, the phase transition is occurring at the normal phase transition temperature. We can therefore imagine being able to carry out the freezing process reversibly. 
We look up the enthalpy of fusion of water, and at this temperature it's 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Now fusion is the melting process. To get something to melt, we have to put heat into it. So Q would be plus 6.01 kilojoules per mole. And freezing is just the opposite. We must take heat out of it. So in this case, Q would be minus 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Now change the 50 grams into moles with the molar mass of water. So N is 2.78 moles. The entropy change in the system is, therefore, delta S equals minus 6,010 joules per mole times 2.78 moles divided by 273.15 Kelvin is minus 61.2 joules per Kelvin. This is the entropy change of the system. The system becomes more organized in the solid state and the atoms are less free to move around as they are now held in a lattice. So it makes sense that the entropy has decreased. By contrast, that heat that left the system had to enter the surroundings at that same temperature. So delta S for surroundings is plus 61.2 joules per Kelvin. The sum of the two is the entropy change of the universe, and it is zero. This is so because the process occurs reversibly. In the second case, we know that the freezing process at minus 8 degrees Celsius must occur irreversibly. Once the freezing starts, if we, we were to increase the temperature even by as much as a degree or more, the freezing would still continue. It would not be reversible. We can, however, envision a process that could accomplish the same thing, but in a series of reversible steps. Then, since entropy is a state function, the entropy change along this reversible path must be the same as along the irreversible path. Here is what we do. We heat the water reversibly from minus 8 degrees up to 0 degrees Celsius. Allow it to freeze reversibly, then reversibly cool the ice back down to minus 8 degrees. For state functions, this path must be identical to the irreversible freezing at minus 8 degrees Celsius. In addition to the enthalpy of fusion, we need the heat capacity of liquid and solid water. Then we can use the equations found earlier to determine delta S and delta H for the process. We need the delta H because that will be the heat that is transferred to or from the surroundings to determine the surroundings entropy change. Here are the equations for calculating entropy and enthalpy changes along this reversible path. Watch out for the starting and ending temperatures during the heating and cooling phases, for they are opposite during those two steps. We have to calculate delta S and delta H for each of the three steps. The amount of material is the same as in the previous question, 2.78 moles. The second step, freezing at 0 degrees Celsius, is identical to the first question, so delta S and delta H are the same. Here are the calculations. First, the entropy calculations for the first step, warming up the liquid water to the freezing point, a positive 6.3 joules per Kelvin. It makes sense for it to be positive because warming something up requires the injection of heat and this must increase the entropy. Next, we calculate the entropy change at the standard freezing point. This is identical to the reversible process calculated just previously, a minus 61.2 joules per Kelvin. Negative makes, makes sense as we move from a liquid phase to a solid phase. Finally, we calculate for the cooling down of the solid ice back to the original temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius, a negative 3.1 joules per Kelvin. Again, this makes sense since in cooling we must remove heat. Note how getting the right temperature in the right place, T final over T initial, gets the sign right. Also note that the heat capacity is different for the liquid and the solid and this makes a difference in the magnitude of the two changes. We sum the three together to get the change in system entropy as minus 58.0 joules per, kel per Kelvin for this irreversible process. Now we can use this value determined via these three reversible steps because entropy is a state function and its value does not depend on how you get from the beginning to the end. We can calculate along the theoretical reversible paths but could not do the calculation directly on the irreversible path. To find the entropy change in the surroundings, we must first find the enthalpy change in the system along this path. Enthalpy is also a state function, and so we can use these equations for these same three steps, except this time we will be calculating for enthalpy rather than entropy. First, the warming step. Expect it to be positive, as it is warming, and we must require the injection of energy in the form of heat. Use the right heat capacity, do not forget to include the number of moles involved, and you get a positive 1690 joules. 
Here we are using the difference in temperatures, while the entropy equations use the ratio of temperatures. The second step is just the enthalpy of fusion multiplied by the moles of material. Be sure to get the sign right. It is freezing, so energy has to be taken out, so it must be negative. We get minus 16,708 joules. Finally, the last step is like the first one, except the temperature change has the opposite sign, and we're using the heat capacity for solid ice. Its value is minus 827 joules. Sum these together to get the total enthalpy change, which can be attributed to the enthalpy change in the irreversible process under consideration. Its value is minus 15845 joules. This is the enthalpy change from the perspective of the system. 15,845 joules must leave the system when the supercooled water freezes at minus 8 degrees Celsius. But we are after the entropy change in the surroundings. The heat that must leave the system must enter the surroundings, and so it does so at this temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius. The enthalpy change of the surroundings must be the positive 15,845 joules, and the entropy change must be a positive 59.8 joules per Kelvin. The sum of this value without found just earlier for the system is the entropy change of the universe. 59.8 minus 58.0 plus 1.8 joules per Kelvin. This is the entropy change of the universe. It is positive. The second law of thermodynamics assures us that for any positive process, this value will never be negative. It can be zero if done reversibly. It will be positive if done irreversibly. The entropy change of the universe will always increase for any spontaneous process carried out in practice, not just the theoretical reversible paths we invoke for our calculations.